Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Vendi and let's continue with the series on Python. We have started talking about polymorphism, right? And in that we have seen one example of duct typing. Now in this video, we'll talk about operator overloading. So what is operator overloading? So we know the concept of operators, right? So we have two operands. Example, if you want to add two numbers, you can say five plus six, where five and six are your operands and plus is the operator. So we know that, right? And then we have a concept of polymorphism. So it simply means you have one thing which has multiple forms, right? Now, if you can think about this, we have two integers and then we are trying to add them. We can also add an integer and a float, right? So in different programming language, it does support. What about two strings? So if you say you have two strings, let's say hello plus world, will it work? And the answer is yes, right? So plus works with the strings as well. But what if you want to say you have a number five? So let's say we got A and A is five right and then we got b and b is let's say world now can i print by saying a plus b the moment you try to run this code uh, you can see we got an error it says unsupported operand types for plus so we cannot use int and string for plus right so all these things are predefined all these things they are called as a synthetic sugar which simply means it is trying to simplify the code for the user see behind the scene things are a bit different imagine this one example if i say uh, a is 5 and b is 6 now what do you think what is happening behind the scene now trust me whatever happens in python happens with the help of object right and here as well, when you talk about A and B, the type of it is this int, right? So int is a class here. And when you say class, of course, class will have certain methods, right? So behind the scene, what is happening is when you say A plus B, which is of type integer, it is calling something. So behind the scene, it is calling int dot. The moment you say int dot, int is a class, right? Then you can see we have a method called as init, we have a method called as abs, and we also have a method called as add, which is very important here. The moment you say int dot add, this is taking two parameters, okay? The first one is a comma b. So what we are doing here in print a plus b, the same thing can be done here. Let me just run this code here. You can see we got the same output, so both are printing 11. So you can say a plus b, or you can say int dot add, by passing two parameters a comma b and of course the first one looks cool right you're simply saying a plus b because from our childhood we are doing that we are trying to add numbers using plus operator but the moment you come to programming in programming whatever you want to do you will be doing that with the help of methods and add is a method which belongs to the int class right if i jump to integer so you can press on the control button and click on the method which you want to see or the class which you want to see you can see it's a class and this class has multiple methods in the same way the moment you say int dot you can access a method called as add and you're calling a comma b so even if you say a plus b behind the scene this is getting called right so this is one thing you have to remember okay so we'll talk about operator overloading later but this is something you have to remember so whenever you add two numbers this is what is getting called behind the scene now if these two things are strings so if i make it string here now this is not integers right they are strings so i have to say str.add now when you say str.add in fact str also has a add method which takes two parameters and both should be of the same type which is string type and then it will work right so if i run this code and you can see it is working so we got five and six as a string so they got concatenated here so this works the moment you change the type of it, it will not work because the inbuilt class doesn't have two things which is uh, integer and string together right so this thing you have to remember now once we know the moment you add a plus operator it calls the add method the moment you put a minus operator it will call a sub method the moment you use a star symbol which is multiplication it will call a mul method so we have different methods for different operators right and normally those things are called as magic methods but that's what they say magic methods right so all these operators behind the scene they work as methods now to understand the concept of operator overloading what i will do is i will say class and let's say we have a student class and every student will have let's say two uh, variables and that will be marks one and marks two just to keep it simple uh, so what i will do here is i will say def and in it and here i will say self 
dot m1 is equal to oh now we want the value from the user right so or maybe i want to pass the value so i will pass it from here m1 comma m2 and let's specify self dot m2 is equal to m2 so we got these two values right now what i want to do is i want to create two objects okay two students object one is let's say s1 is equal to student and this will take two values i would say uh, 58 comma 69 that's the value here and then s2 is equal to student and this student will have let's say 60 comma 65 so we got two marks here right we got two student and each student have two marks now i want to apply the operator here which is plus operator so i want to add these two students so the moment i say s1 plus s2 i want a different student object right is it possible to do that let's try so i will say s3 uh, is equal to s1 plus s2 because now we know that plus operator means it will add two values but it is possible with the help of integer it is possible with the help of string is it possible to use plus operator with student class that's a question so let's run this code let's see what happens okay we are not printing the value of s3 but let's run this code the moment you try to run this code you will get an error oh okay we got different error here it says student takes no argument but it is taking arguments right what's wrong oh we have written the wrong method name my bad let's run this code once again so i was expecting this error not the first one and the error is it says unsupported operand type plus we cannot use plus between student and student because we have not defined it right if you remember behind the scene even if you use plus with integers it will be calling a add method but if you see our class we don't have that add method right because if you say s1 plus s2 how your compiler how your python will know what to do and that's where you have to define it yeah that's where you have to say hey the moment anyone says plus of a student you need to call this method called as add okay so you can overload the operator and you can change definition for it you can define anything you want right so i can say add and this add will take two parameters the first one is self comma other and you can see it takes two parameters self and other okay guess what is happening so behind the scene this code is getting converted into it is student dot add which takes two parameters s1 comma s2 so what is self and what is other here so the first parameter is self and s2 is the other parameter you can change the variable name that's fine okay uh, you can say this is o and it should work it's a variable name right so this is what is getting called behind the scene right so here what i will do is i will say uh, let's take two variables m1 m1 is equal to self dot m1 and m2 is equal to self dot m2 so we got two variables right oh not just self m1 plus it is other dot m1 plus other dot m2 so this is how you add values right so self m1 and other m1 and then m2 will have the addition of self m2 and other m2 so this works and once you got these two values what you will be doing is you will be creating a new student object we'll call it s3 you can have any name doesn't matter so s3 is equal to student by passing these two values m1 comma m2 and now once you got the student you will return s3 here right that is what you're expecting so the moment you say s1 plus s2 it will return the value it will return a new object of student and it will assign that to s3 okay so this is what will happen now if i print the value for s3 so i will let me print s3 dot m1 and the moment you run this code run and you can see it works you got 118 uh, is it right of course it should be right so it is 58 plus 60 and that's right we got 118 this thing is working right perfect so if you want to add two students you need to overload the operator of plus because integer knows what is plus string knows what is plus your student class don't know what is that plus means so plus means call the add method but we don't have an add method here so we have to define our own method the same thing can be done with subtraction which is minus the same thing can be done with multiplication so i would recommend you to explore more on this you know so at the moment you say def uh, underscore underscore you can see we have so many methods we also have greater than we also have uh, equal to symbol we can compare two objects uh, we can say the different methods available here okay so try it out we also have multiplication somewhere uh, so you can see we also have mul so everything is predefined you can just use them in fact for this example i will take one more i want to compare if two objects are greater than or equal to example if i say if s1 is greater than s2 this is the horrible way of comparing students because marks is not a criteria where you can compare students but just for the example i will say s1 wins so whoever has maximum marks i will say they win i will say else print 
S2 wins. So what we're trying to do here is whoever has maximum marks, they will win. But when you say maximum marks, how will you check it? Because we are not defining it, right? Maybe I want to check only first marks, which is M1, or maybe I want to check M2, or maybe the addition of both. You can try it out. So what I will do here is, this will work, of course not, because the moment you try to run this code, it will give you an error by saying, to get a symbol not supported between two instances of student. It is supported for integers because it is predefined. So here as well, if you want to make it work, you have to define a function of method which is gt. gt is greater than. ge is greater than or equal to. So you want to check only greater than. And then here you'll be using self and other as usual because behind the scene that is what is happening. It is saying student.gt and it's passing two variables, s1, s2. So s1 goes to self, s2 goes to other. And now, how do I compare? So we'll say s1 doesn't matter, is it s1 or something? So we'll say s1 is equal to self.m1 plus self.m2. And we'll say s2 is equal to other.m1 plus other.m2. So we are adding their marks basically. You can compare. If S1 is greater than S2, now this time S1 and S2, they're not objects, okay? They are simple variables of integer. Okay, if I'm getting confused with this, let me just make it R. That should make sense. So let's compare R1 and R2. Now this, those are just marks, right? If R1 is greater than R2, we will say return true, else return false. Simple. Now if you run this code, we are comparing it, right? Let's compare and let's run and it worked. You can see S1 wins, right? Because S1 values are higher. So 58 plus 69 is higher than 60 plus 65. But what if I change the value for S2? Let's say this 69. And you can see, of course, now S2 is bigger. So let's run this code. And you can see it says S2 wins. So that's right. So what we are doing is we are adding those values and then we are comparing it. So if you want to perform any operation on the objects which are user defined, you have to define all these methods. Okay, there's one more. What if you have a variable let's say a is equal to 9 the moment you say print a and you can see it will print the value of a there's nothing wrong with that you can see it is printing the value of a now is it printing the address of a that's not the case right it's not printing the address of a it is printing the value of a but what happens the moment you try to print s1 it will not print the values of s1 it will try to print the address of s1 okay so you can see that it says it's a student object at the address at this position Hey, we don't want address, right? We want values. What is happening? So when you try to print the object, doesn't matter is it integer or your class, behind the scene, it is calling a method called as str. It is happening behind the scene, okay? Even if you don't call it, it is happening behind the scene. So the moment you say print a, it will try to call a.str and that's why uh, you are getting the output, right? You're getting 9 because it is calling str. In the same way, the moment you say s1, even this is calling str, right? And now if you run this code, you can see it is still giving the same output. That means it is calling str. What is this str? So if I click on this, you can see it is in built-in. So even if you don't define str function or method in your own class, it is getting defined somewhere. And that definition, what is printing? It is printing the module name, it is printing the name of the class, and it is printing the object address. We don't want that, we want values, right? That means we need to override this method. So what I will do is I will say def, and the method name is str, so you have to define this by yourself. So we want to return the value of m1 and m2, right? So you will say self.m1, comma self.m2, and now if I run this code, it will return a tuple of course. Let's run this code and you got it. Can you see that we got 58 and 69. So now if you want to print the object, it will not print the address, it will print the values, right? Because we are overriding the str. So if you remove str, if you run this code, you got an error. So it is returning a non-string value. We have to return a string value. How do we do that? Because by default, when you say print, you want to print a string, right? So what you will do is, uh, you will use a format here. So you can say curly brackets, curly brackets, you're printing two stuff, dot format. And inside this format, you can pass this two values. So what will happen is those curly brackets will be replaced by these values. So you are returning a string now. And we have seen that before, right? So let's run this code. And it worked. You can see it got 58 and 69. So even if you say print S1, it does work. You can also print S2 if you want. And let's run this code and you can see we got 69 and 65. 
So that's perfect. So this is how you work with operator overloading. Okay, so point to remember is when you want to perform any operator like addition, subtraction, deletion, behind the scene, we are calling methods. Okay, so for plus, we use add method, for, for minus, we use sub method, and for star, we use multi method. In fact, we have list of methods there, right? So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos.